right, ladies, the next two or next few videos will be a review of fractions and decimals since we struggled with that a little bit. Remember when you are writing a fraction, the top number is what we call the numerator and it's how many are shaded in. So for 1A, for example, it would be 1. And the bottom number is how many are shaded or how many in total in that shape. So 3. Press pause and fill in on a sheet of paper, the remainder, the rest of them. So B, uh, 1 B and C and 2 B and C. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is equivalent fractions. I'm just going to enlarge this a bit here. Um, equivalent fractions can be found by multiplying the top number and the bottom number by the same number, so the numerator and the denominator. So, for example, if we were trying to find equivalent fractions of 3 fourths, in this case, we've decided to go with 3 as the number that you multiply. It can be any number. So what you do to the first number or to the top number, you also do to the bottom. So 3 times 3 being 9, 4 times 3 being 12. Really, all that means is that you've taken something that was 3 fourths, and you've divided each fourth into 3 pieces. Okay, ideally they'd be drawn equally and you still have three of them colored in, which now becomes nine of them, so three whole sections. Okay, so all of these ones would be colored in. And that makes it equivalent. Equivalent just means you're dividing it differently. So take a moment now, press pause. Um, for these ones, you are multiplying by the number that's beside here. So for three-fourths, you're gonna multiply the top and bottom by three. One-fourth, you're gonna multiply top and bottom by four, and so on to find the equivalent fraction for each. Here, you have to figure out what you need to multiply by. So for example, one times what is going to give you three? Whatever you multiplied by, you're going to multiply the same number on the bottom. So let's take a look, one over five, something times three, one times what is gonna give you three? Well, one times three. So down here, you're gonna multiply by three as well. Five times three is 15. Remember, ladies, to use your multiplication tables if necessary. No, use your multiplication tables. At this point, press pause and find the rest of them that were not done on this page. Now, sometimes you find equivalent fractions by dividing. So here we have 4 sixteenths. We want to know what can we use um, to divide, what number can we divide from both the top and the bottom. Well, from 16 we can divide 2, from 4 we can divide 2, so we could divide by 2 from both, or we could divide by 4 from both, whichever we chose. So here they chose to divide by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, 16 divided by 4 is 4, so an equivalent fraction would be 1 fourth. Or we could divide by 2 on each, and 4 divided by 2 is 2, 8 16 divided by 2 is 8, so 2 eighths is another equivalent fraction. Again, in these ones, you're trying to figure out what it is that you're dividing by. So 30 divided by what is going to give you 10? Um, 30 divided by 3 would give you 10 because 10 times 3 is 30. So, for example, if we were doing that first one, we said divided by 3. What we do to the bottom, we also have to do to the top. So 24 divided by 3. Use your multiplication table if necessary. 24 divided by 3 is 8. So 8 tenths would be an equivalent fraction to 24 thirtieths. Again, all that means is that you are dividing it differently. So instead of dividing it into, into 30 parts, you're combining three pieces to make one piece so you'd end up with 10 pieces altogether. Press pause and complete the remainder of the questions on this page. Please hand in all your work to do with equivalent fractions. Make sure if you have questions that you ask, um, and then I will give you a short little quiz about equivalent fractions before you move on.